Jihad has come to America. Constitutes the most devastating series of terrorist attacks in history. The only deen Allah accepts is Al Islam. And whoever seeks any other deen apart from Islam will never be accepted. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. There exists the claim that the problem with Islam is with its followers, and from that stems the idea for reformation. When we deal with followers, we deal with interpretations, perspectives, and personal judgments and evaluations. So the thought is that if portions of religion deemed inconsistent with westernized standards are removed, then there would be less of a chance for misinterpretation and ultimately a more modern version of that belief might exist. Um, but is fo focusing on the follower's interpretation, looking at the beginning of the issue, or is it just a tactic covering up the root of the actual problem? We should ask at least these four questions when looking at whether or not Islam can be reformed. First, in the Muslim community, how many views exist on whether or not Islam is in fact a religion of peace? If there's a divide on this, and if there's a divide on whether or not Islam should be reformed, how can we expect it to be reformed? Secondly, when an ideology is claimed or deemed perfect, then why would an altered version of that ideology exist as an option to its followers? Or should it be concluded that the belief can be only true or only false within its original form? Third, does the Quran teach Muslims that Islam is perfect? If it doesn't, then a middle path could feasibly exist in which reformation could take place to parallel today's westernized standards. If it does, what is there to reform in something which is already deemed perfect? And finally, if it is possible to reform a belief, how do we go about defining the grounds to have the authority to do so? Uh, there is the assumption that if all institutions of Islam deem it necessary for the reformation of Islam, then the religion could be reformed. But because of this divide, a pressure is created and so prohibiting the full modernization of Islam. For the sake of simplicity, uh, tonight let's temporarily put aside this so-called pressure and assume that all institutions of Islam are united in their view and that there is the agreement that there are areas of reformation needed in order for Islam to be completely modernized. With that said, the question then remains, can Islam be reformed? If it can be reformed, and if it is reformed, can we still call it Islam? Or is the reformation process itself at war with the very core of the religion? Thank you so much for joining us here on Jihad Exposed. We have three very special guests with us, all experts in Islam. Robert Spencer, author of 10 books, is the director of Jihad Watch, an organization dedicated to bringing public attention to the role that jihad theology and ideology plays in the modern world and to correcting popular misconceptions about the role of jihad and religion in modern day conflicts. Also with us is Dr. Zushdi Jasser, president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, an organization to provide an American Muslim voice advocating for the preservation of the founding principles of the U.S. Constitution, liberty and freedom, and the separation of mosque and state. And Walid Shubat, founder of Shubat Ministry, is also with us, a former radicalized Muslim, a convert to Christianity, an author of several books, including God's War on Terror. Walid travels globally and appears regularly on national television speaking on radical Islam and terrorism. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this evening, gentlemen. Uh, Robert, I I'd like to begin the night with you. In general, before we get into the specifics, in general, if the reform of a belief system were to take place, and if reform is based on reason, and if reasoning leads to changing attributes of the original belief, is then reasoning not taking almost a higher authority than faith? And if so, then on what basis does faith exist at all? 
Well, yeah, I think that if reason is taken as the sole criterion by which the religion is to be formed, then yes, you do have a big problem with religion, reason taking precedence over faith, and that cuts at the heart of the premises of the religion in question itself. Uh, reformations in religion have generally not taken that kind of a uh, form. In Christianity, which is of course the most notable religion to undergo a large-scale reformation, the reformation was based on uh, charges that the, uh, the existing authorities had misused, misinterpreted the sources of the revelation, and that the true meaning of the revelation was different from how it had been represented. Uh, it was not really a bringing to bear of reason over faith. Mm -hmm. uh, in Islam, of course, which is uh, the, the key religion in question here tonight about uh, whether religion can be reformed, there is even less of a chance that reason would bring, be uh, brought to bear uh, over faith because, of course, that would be considered to be uh, something that would be in contradiction to what had been divinely revealed and therefore would not be questioned. Uh, you mentioned in your introduction that uh, if something is considered to be perfect, it's difficult to reform it. And the Quran in chapter 5 verse 3 uh, says that uh, this day I have perfected your religion for you. And so if the religion is perfected in the Quran, and presumably also by extension in the Sunnah, as we may be discussing this evening, uh, then the uh, problem is not really bringing reason to bear to it, but the fact that reason can't be brought to bear uh, in, this, in this context mm -hmm. without contradicting the core principles of the religion itself. And so I would never say that the reform of Islam is impossible, but given the uh, nature of Islamic theology, the nature of the general understanding of what the Quran is and what the Sunnah is, that it would be extraordinarily difficult to reform. Uh, Muhammad, for example, said, my community will never agree on an error. And there's a very great uh, importance given to ijma, to consensus in Islamic theology. And there is broad consensus, unfortunately, on the many of the very things that are in crying need of reform. In other words, there is, uh, among the schools of Islamic jurisprudence, no significant disagreement in the teachings on violence against unbelievers, the necessity to subjugate unbelievers under the rule of Islamic law. These things are rooted in the Quran, uh, the oppression of women, uh, the uh, denial of the freedom of conscience, the death penalty for apostates, and so on. Uh, there's no significant disagreement upon them, which makes it even harder mm -hmm. to bring uh, reason or anything else, really, to bear to reform those very elements that most need reform. Well, I'd like to turn it over to actually Dr. Joster now. It, I mean, in a society, the process of uh, reformation, I would assume, needs um, self-examination to precede it. Now, if the Quran, like Robert just said, states that Muslims are the best people for mankind, that, that Islam is the perfect religion, is the very act of reformation contrary to Islamic principles in your mind, if the guiding source, the Quran itself, implies to its followers the lack of need for self-examination um, at the core, what are what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I can't tell you how important this question is. It really is. It it runs to the core of whether we're able to bring our practice of our faith into modernity. So how do you do that? I I think there's a lot of contradictions in in what in, not only in the question you asked, but in, in some of Robert's answer in that, yes, we, I as a Muslim believe that the Arabic script of the Quran is perfect because we as Muslims believe that that was transmitted directly from God to Muhammad. But Muhammad is not around anymore and uh, he's no longer conversing with God. So the interpretation of that scripture is human. The, the manifestation of what we think God meant is human. So while the scripture is perfect, never at any time has the practice, even the Prophet himself was corrected in the Quran a number of times by God because he made errors. So um, not to mention the passage that, that Robert quoted about that I have perfected your religion for you. In fact, many of us use that, that passage to say that much of the hadith and the sunnah that is thought to be scripture that from many of those that interpret Islam interpret it from, uh, I think, many passages that are not legitimate in the hadith say that, well, wait a minute, God tells us in the Quran that he's perfected and completed our religion for us at that time, so therefore the hadith, much of which, most of which was written 70 years up to 300 years after the prophet was 
uh, uh, fabricated and, and not legitimate and some of which are not as uh, uh, um, uh, solid in their sense of authenticity. 